ago, you're not going to start that project until 1216. Tentatively right now in order to move 606 ahead right. to get that open. Which is fine. We're pushing it out a year, but we are actively still looking for money to try to keep that schedule because we don't want the same thing to happen with 606 okay. to happen with 722. Now, because you found money from another project, we can do 722 like we'd originally thought with yes. one side open so we don't have to worry about a super detour again for the school buses and things. Yes. We're still moving with stage construction on 722. That has not changed. Well, we had changed it before because we weren't, we weren't going to do stage oh, on 722. I got 722. you. Got you. Totally. So, so you're, you're actually saying requesting now that 722 be stage construction instead of the detour. Right. Since that's, we were doing 606 because right. that had to be done, but now we don't have to worry about that. So, again, it would be beneficial to those developing industries in the Milford Industrial Park. For stage construction. For stage construction. I will take that to our bridge section. Thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. No problem. Okay. Other board members have questions? I would like to thank you, uh, especially for coming up today, Mr. Nelson and Robert, for uh, looking at Campbell Drive and uh, Stonewall Lane, and appreciate all your help in that uh, effort. No problem. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Well, Mr. Nelson, before you go, do we have money for rural additions anymore? Rural additions can be appropriated by this board during the secondary six-year plan. Okay. So you can say that you can, you can take a percentage of your secondary six-year plan money and, do and place additions. it into rural additions. And we're going to do that in, like, June, I think. Yes, that, that should okay. be coming up here pretty soon. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. Okay, thank you again, Mr. Uh, Nelson. All right, that takes us to the Fredericksburg Regional Alliance, Mr. Kerry Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, happy to be here this evening and I wanted to give you an update on our activities at, uh, at the Fredericksburg Regional Alliance. There is a white package at your, uh, at your uh, seat that, uh, that I've provided some information to you. I'm going to be referring to uh, the document, the first document on the right hand side. I'll explain what else is in the packet as we go. Uh, we've had a pretty busy uh, past six months in this fiscal year. I uh, want to commend Gary Wilson and the work he's doing for the county. We've had a lot of activity that uh, Gary has been asked to help us develop packets and responses to requests. Um, so it's been, uh, been quite an active, active period. If you flip to the page that uh, says activity report, that'll give you an idea of, of the flow of work that we have had in this fiscal year. Uh, you will see that we have actively worked 20 projects uh, that we've responded to. 13 of those have come from the Virginia Economic Development Partnership, and seven have been direct inquiries to the Alliance looking, uh, looking at the region. Uh, this compares to nine projects in all of the past fiscal year. Uh, so the pace, is, uh, the pace is picking up, and the amount of time that we've got to respond to these inquiries has shortened. Uh, Caroline had an opportunity to provide responses to 17 of these inquiries. Uh, we have had one of these 20 uh, announced for the region this year. We have one pending announcement in the region. Three are no longer um, interested in our area, uh, either because we did not have the infrastructure they were looking for, or we did not have the site, or we did not have a facility that met their needs. Um, so that leaves us with 15 that we are still actively working uh, for the region today. The next page uh, is titled the Virginia Economic Development Association Cardinals Overview. Uh, VITA is Hall of Fame. Uh, they are referred to as Cardinals. They're senior economic development officials from across the state who have received recognition from that organization. Uh, one of the things that they do, uh, typically in retirement, is they will come out and audit your economic development programs at, uh, at no cost, just direct expenses to come do that. We were very fortunate uh, that we had an excellent team come out. Robin Solenberger, who is the retired CEO of the Shenandoah Valley Partnership, which is housed at James Madison. Uh, Greg Winkfield, who recently retired, is the president of the Greater Richmond Partnership. And Mark Kilduff, who is the longtime deputy director uh, at the state level. Uh, they spent a couple of days with us uh, back in January reviewing all of our programs and activities and they made a series of recommendations. I'll cover a few of them here. The full report uh, is in your packet uh, so that you could, uh, you could review it at your leisure. 
I do want to point out one thing that they, uh, they stressed uh, very early in the report. Uh, they recommended that we start considering ourselves the fourth metropolitan area on the, on the urban corridor in eastern Virginia. Uh, this means that uh, our competition is with Northern Virginia, uh, the Richmond metropolitan area, metropolitan area, and Hampton Roads, and that that's how we needed to start looking at how we go to market on behalf of the region. Um, that is uh, a little bit daunting when you start looking at the funding uh, that, that we're up against there, but that doesn't mean we can't uh, operate a little bit smarter and in a more rifle shot approach. First recommendation is that we needed to update the website. Uh, before the Cardinals arrived, we had already gotten three proposals to work on this. We will be rolling out a refresh of our website on May 1st. Uh, as you'll notice uh, back on the uh, activity log, the amount of traffic to our website has increased dramatically. We've moved away from print and broadcast media uh, almost exclusively to web-based advertising through LinkedIn and Google AdWords. Uh, second. Uh, in con the number two recommendation was to uh, work more closely with VEDP and develop a marketing plan uh, with, with our colleagues in each locality. We do that when it comes budget time. They also recommended that we use someone like a 310 marketing. Basically what 310 does uh, is they cold call and they find you uh, basically qualified prospects. These are companies or site consultants who are actively working a project that uh, they want to develop in the next 36 to 48 months, and you reimburse them on a, uh, on a per meeting basis. It's not something our alliance has tried before, uh, but that it has been done by Richmond. As a matter of fact, Richmond has an ongoing agreement to, uh, to go to market this way. Hampton Roads uses them, um, as well as Fairfax and Prince William. So we're piloting a, a project, a, a tour with them uh, for late May and early June up through the Northeast. Uh, they recommended that we work uh, more closely with the commercial real estate community in the region. Uh, a number of the major tracks that we would look at from an industrial development standpoint are, are controlled uh, by the private sector. Uh, we recently have been able to attract the Fredericksburg Association of uh, Realtors as a new member and are working with them closely to reach out um, and work more closely with the commercial real estate community. Um, I covered number four a little bit. In the, in the budget co uh, comparison of a little bit of what we're up against. However, I will say we've attracted five new private sector investors in the last four months uh, to our organization. The other thing is, as a regional alliance, most regional alliances across the state, and there's 16 others uh, like us, their funding would typically be between 60 and 70 percent public, and we operate at a 50-50 public-private. Uh, and I, th I think we can continue to grow that as we go forward. Uh, number five, we did an industry cluster analysis that you all may recall back in 2013 that identified uh, basically four clusters to market into in the region. Uh, what it did not do is identify companies within those clusters. Uh, we engaged an intern from the University of Mary Washington, a senior business student, and she has been going uh, through the top five states that we have website traffic from and identifying the top employers and the subclusters within that cluster analysis. Uh, that should be completed by late April, and that'll give us a set of businesses that we then can look at and start talking about how we're going to market more directly to them to try to attract them to the region. Um, we do have a high volume of research inquiries. Last year, we had over 400 research inquiries for information. They were typically site-specific about population density, traffic in front of the site, uh, household income in the region. We don't really follow up or have not had a history of following up to see what happened with those, with those projects. Uh, we now have a way to do that and we are following back up, uh, primarily with the commercial real estate community. About 40% of these inquiries, uh, research inquiries, come from the commercial real estate community. Um, number seven deals with sites. Uh, one a uh, thing that the region and the state, for that matter, needs to work on. Uh, Virginia is at the lowest inventory of, of what VEDP would call certified sites. These are project ready. Uh, there are about four or five different levels of site certification. The state does not have a set of standards to work against, but they do recognize audits by third party firms. Uh, we redeployed about $15,000 out of our budget. Uh, to retain uh, a firm to work with each jurisdiction to, to go in and audit one site 
and show us a plan, a path, of what it would take to get it to various levels of certification. Uh, we'll be interviewing those firms uh, next week. Gary will be participating uh, with that along with all of our colleagues from each jurisdiction. Uh, this would allow us to be more proactive. We would then have a product uh, that, that, that we could go to market with, with a package, and know that if we put it in front of a prospect, uh, that it is ready for them to locate there. Uh, but that we're, we're very early in that process. It'll probably be the summer before we fully identified and have audited those sites. And obviously, I think Gary will be uh, uh, working with you all pretty closely on what we identify there. It also gives you an opportunity, uh, especially if it's privately held, that everybody can get on the same page as to what needs to occur with the site and how to move it forward. Um, grading consistently using the VEDP Virginia Scan. Virginia Scan is basically just a big website for or a data center for sites across the state. It is where the state aggregates their inventory. It is the first stop that they go to uh, when a prospect comes to the state. Uh, we are going to start converting our website to, uh, to link to Virginia Scan. Uh, the one, one thing it does do is quarterly we need to make sure that the sites that are available in the market in the region are, are updated and, um, and on that site. Number 10, um, there was quite a bit of talk and has been quite a bit of talk about a commuter study. We have a large net out commute from the region, 40,000 people a day leave the region. Um, it is a highly skilled workforce. Uh, as you know, we have a relatively low unemployment rate. So when you're talking to prospects about available labor, in our case, we need to market how many people would stay home and work uh, rather than commute out of the region. That has to be our available labor tool. Uh, there was a labor study done in 2006 by FRA. Uh, the purpose of that study was simply to say, if you commuted X miles, how much less would you take to stay closer to home? Uh, in 06, they said if you went 45 minutes, you'd take 10,000 less uh, in base salary. Uh, that's a good piece of information, but what we really don't know about, that, uh, about the commuting pool is what do they do and where do they do it. And that's the type of information we need to match it up with the prospects that were in the cluster analysis. Uh, so we're talking with the Department of Economics at, uh, at Mary Washington about updating that study. Uh, we, that, that is something that we are going to be seeking grants for. There are a couple of different uh, uh, pots that we can compete for to do that kind of study because it is workforce related. Um, number 14, uh, this is part of number 14. Uh, I think in the past, uh, uh, you know, we sort of showed up when requested and only around budget time. Uh, we want to come twice a year, uh, both to this Board of Supervisors and to your EDA and give you an update of what's going on, show you the activity log, answer any questions that you may have not let big gaps of time go by uh, when we're, we're carrying on a dialogue, because ultimately this is your organization. Um, and, and you all are owners in it, and you're investors in it, and you have a, you know, we want your participation, and we want you to be fully engaged. Um, <clears throat> there is a letter in the packet. Tomorrow night we have a briefing uh, from the, uh, one of the vice presidents at VEDP on Economic Development 101 post-recession. How you go to market and economic development has changed pretty dramatically uh, since the recession, especially the timeline. The timeline between somebody has decided they want to build something and they want to be up and running. Uh, they've sat on cash for quite a period of time, so they're trying to turn quicker uh, than, say, they would have 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, we'll also have an overview of the, the state and regional economy by the uh, research specialist at VEDP tomorrow night. So we'd love to have you come. Um, again, there is a, uh, there's a letter in the package there from Kent Farmer, the chairman of our board, inviting you all to attend, and we'd love to have you. Uh, we also, uh, as is in your packet, there is a quarterly newsletter that will be going out. Uh, that's the second one that appeared, and it, uh, it does cover a little bit about the Cardinals report, or at least some of the highlights on it. And the final thing that was in there, and one of the things we specifically asked them for, there's a lot of discussion about metrics. Uh, how do you measure... Uh, marketing, um, and that, that is a difficult thing to do. Uh, but there's been a lot of talk, especially in the economic development world, about how to look at uh, return on investment for marketing dollars. Uh, so though you'll see a list there of the types of things that uh, was recommended that we look at measuring. And then there are two charts after it that uh, we have developed uh, in light of those recommendations. 
Uh, they're blank at the moment uh, because the board is uh, going to go through a strategic planning process, and I know Mr. Akers will participate in that. And we'll be talking over the summer and the fall about long-term objectives and goals and uh, where we would like to be and the number of announcements that, uh, that we need to have. There are four recommendations in there that I've not covered. Uh, I, did, I didn't, as you will see them. They, uh, they relate to how we engage with uh, your economic development offices and those of the other jurisdictions in the region. Uh, we are going to have the uh, Cardinals come back. We meet monthly. Uh, uh, Gary and our colleagues from uh, the other four jurisdictions get together on a monthly basis. Cardinals are going to come back and we're going to talk about those four recommendations because they deal with how we communicate within the region and some tools that we might want to make available uh, through our offices. So that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, does the board have questions? Uh, Mr. Black, did I see your hand? Yeah. Okay. I just got a, I guess, kind of a question as far as um, from the, like I'm on the GWRC, from the GWR pers perspective, one of the things we're looking at regionally is these different organizations that are out there, like you guys and the Chamber of Commerce. And um, I guess the question for us is how well are you guys working with, because I saw you guys had mentioned some of the things about studies um, that are being done as far as commuters. Uh, GWRC seems to be giving us information all the time. Weldon Cooper is another one that provides a lot of that information. So it seems like there's a lot of, I guess it seems to me a lot of like, dual stuff going on. It's, and I'm just wondering if you can address that of how you guys would be different mm -hmm. than, um, because you know, if counties with money being tight, are we funding the same thing in two different, three different locations? Uh, we're trying to look to see is there a way that we can you know, eliminate some of this uh, kind of the same thing going on with multiple organizations. So can you address that? Well, specifically on the commuter study, uh, we are coordinating with GWRC and with the chamber on that and have had discussions with them about the type of information we want to glean from it. What we want from it is oftentimes very different than what VDOT does. We're really looking from a workforce standpoint for some information that is not readily available today. No one has interviewed those commuters to find out, again, what I was looking for is what's their skill set, what's their educational background, and where are they going to work. We know the jurisdictions they go to. You know, there is computer or commuter studies done by VDOT that say X number of people leave Caroline and they go to work in Hanover or they go to work at Chesterfield or they go to work uh, in Fairfax. But what it doesn't tell us is what do they do? And that's really what an employer wants to do. They want to know what the skill, for, skill of that workforce is. Uh, so it's a little bit different than what you would find from GWRC or from the chamber. But, you know, I go to the monthly meetings with uh, uh, the city manager and the county administrators at GWRC, and we're talking a lot about how to better coordinate those things. But it is a slice of information. If it was readily available, we wouldn't do the study. I mean, you're correct. It'd be a waste of money. Um, I just think from our perspective, that's one of the things that all the localities are looking at right now. And I think that's something that needs to be stressed um, as far as among all localities and stuff like that and organizations like that is if Caroline's spending X amount of money for you guys and X amount of money for GWRC and X amount of money for whatever the organizations that we're into, I think we need to kind of streamline so that way we're not spending mm -hmm. just, and I think that was the sentiment among supervisors of all the, you know, the localities that make up GWRC. So it would be nice to see that there's kind of more some efficiency there sure. rather than you know, people doing the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Other board members? If not, thank you, Mr. Kerry. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate Chairman. Your time. Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Okay, that takes us to our consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that any board member would like to see pulled? Mr. Chairman, I don't want to pull, but I would like to emphasize agenda item number E. Okay. Right. Okay. It's basically the letter from uh, to the school uh, asking for uh, permission to recognize the ball, the baseball stadium. Uh, no, it says it says here that's the approval letter of support for uh, payment in lieu of taxes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, All right. And and you may recall, and Mr. Akers may recall, seems like back in the '90s when we got sixty some thousand dollars from Port AP Hill. Okay. Um, but we need to emphasize, I think last year I asked the staff to uh, write this letter and we again got a request from NACO. 
Um, and then we got an email from the Commission of Revenue supporting that. But if we, if we did some real fuzzy math, 77,000 acres, even if it's all in land use at $1,000 an acre, that's over a million dollars in tax the county could get. Right. And, and, and we need to definitely emphasize this to the federal government. We all support our troops. We all, you know, support the Army. But, but this is a facility that's totally different. They go on the base and they don't come off. So there's really no, as, as I've said before, the economic impact is insignificant. Mm -hmm. And we need to have some sort of help from the federal government. If they're starting to look at it at the NACO level, we need to make sure we're part of this group to see what we can get. OK. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman, may I add to that? This is one of my passions. If you will excuse me for just a minute. One of the you want to come to the mic? I've had a long, hard road with Fort A.P. Hill, and because we do, um, business license does apply to the Hill. This has not been easy. But one of the things I would like for you all to look at is I believe we are not categorized correctly. What we get money for is Stonewall Jackson, okay? And because this is an active base, we're eliminated. I don't think we're categorized right, and that's why I've been trying to shake some leaves myself. We are not the same as an active, everyday action base. We are a sophisticated training area for everybody, even foreign countries. And I think we're categorized wrong, and we do need some help in this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, could I certainly could, could I maybe uh, encourage you know several years ago uh, members of this board would go to Washington with the county administrator and with other people from the county and, and meet with uh, the senators and, and the congressmen. We haven't done that for a number of years now. Uh, it may be well uh, if Mrs. Carter could. I know you've made contact with uh, Senator Warner and, and others, and uh, this may be a, a good time in order to uh, make a visit such as that again and sit down and talk to those people and explain, uh, as Mrs. Carter has said, that uh, we think we are miscategorized. And so uh, I think it may be a good idea if we can do that, and many of the board members can go, we'll go can go, and, and we'll go. Uh, that shows that there's an, an interest and a concern. So I would just throw that out and suggest that we do that. Yeah, I would ask uh, Mr. Cully if you would pursue that, uh, see when we could get a, a date and time to meet with our representatives and uh, as many of us uh, as can would, would go at that time. Okay. Mr. Chairman, on that note, I'd move for the adoption and consent agenda. Okay, it's been moved and uh, second. Second. It's been moved and probably second that we adopt the consent agenda item as presented. Items A through E, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. Okay, that takes us to our public, um, I mean, our closed session. Um, so at this time, we will recess for our closed session. Not recess, but we will go into closed session. Um, I move that the board convene in closed meeting pursuant to the prospective business exemption of section 2.2-377 a5 of the Code of Virginia to discuss a prospective business locating in the, in the county where no previous announcement has been made. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and proper second that we would now go into closed session as recommended. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We are now to come out of executive session. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. It's been moved and proper second that we would uh, come out of executive session. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Uh, Mr. Thomas, do you certify that we only discuss <coughs> those things appropriate under the ordinance that we, under the code that we went under? I did not participate, Mr. Chairman, so I will not certify. Mr. Black? I shall certify. Mr. 
Underwood. I so certify. Mr. Aker. I so certify. Mr. Mm. Seely. I so certify. And I so certify as well. Okay. Um, that takes us to the public hearing section of our agenda. I'm sorry, public comment section I'm sorry, of our agenda. Uh, this is the portion of uh, our agenda uh, that we allow citizens to come before the board and uh, discuss or talk about any uh, issue that they may have as long as it is not a public hearing. Uh, we will allow you three minutes. Uh, you may come forward, uh, state your name, your voting district if it's applicable, and uh, talk about whatever issue you may uh, would like to share with the board. As I said, as long as it is not uh, a public hearing. So at this time, I will open the meeting up for public comment, and I will ask anyone who would like to speak, come forward at this time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Especially to you, Mr. Underwood. My name is Dot Amos, and I live at 16423 Dry Bridge Road. On behalf of my husband, my grandchildren, my family, all the baby deers, little ducks, rabbits, and squirrels that go across from my land to where the dump was supposed to be built, I want to thank you. By saying no to the dump, as you did, you have kept the traffic off of Dry Bridge Road so that I can come out of my mailbox and not have to be worried about run over by a large truck. The traffic on 301 is great. You have kept the best water that anyone can drink in my well from being contaminated. You have kept the odor away so that I can open up my windows at night and smell the fresh air hear the little crickets sing as I go to sleep at night. So again, you have kept Caroline beautiful. I would like to thank every one of you for saying no to the dump, and I pray that you will continue to keep Caroline as beautiful as it is now and say no to anybody that wants to build a dump. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Abel. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at this time? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ann Klockner. I'm the Executive Director at Rappahannock Legal Services. And I wanted to make a special point of coming here tonight to thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak, but also for your previous support. I'd like to uh, express our gratitude for the money that we get from Caroline County to do the work that represents uh, the clients who are in our um, our caseload who are coming from Caroline County. We ask for level funding this year. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. If you if you would like to speak regarding the budget, you would need to come at that time. Uh, we're going to present the budget. The county administrator is going to present the budget in a few minutes, and we'll open the public hearing up, and you can come at that time. And that's the public comment period for right. the budget. Right. I see. I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. Yeah. It, it, it won't be long. Okay. Anyone else who would like to speak uh, on any issue other than uh, something that's covered under the public hearing? Anyone who would like to speak on any issue? Seeing no one with the desire to speak, I will now declare the public comment section of the meeting closed. That takes us to public hearings. Uh, the county administrators propose fiscal year budget 2015-2016. Mr. Cullen.
Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, um, I'm going to go through some slides to explain uh, the budget first, and then we'll hold a public hearing on that, and um, then we can hold a public hearing on the um, t proposed tax rates, which are the same, and then we'll hold a public hearing on the uh, capital improvements plan. But most all of this is covered in these slides. I'll, I'll stop at the end of the, the actual budget part. Um, I'm sorry I found out after I got here, for whatever reason, this doesn't fit on the screen. Um, <laughs> it did it at the office, so it's got some sort of glitch. Um, this is an overview of department requests. The total department request increased from FY15 to FY16, $7,579,035, or 16.87%. That's what I'm talking about is all the departments making their various requests um, to the budget this year um, was a fair increase. Uh, the total real estate tax increase needed to fully fund all the requests, if we were to fully fund all the department requests, would take an additional 29.72 cents, basically 30 cents just so you would understand where, <laughs> where we started. School operation fund requested an increase of $1,703,552, or 14.2 per 20 percent. Um, real estate tax increase needed to fully fund the school's operation request 6.68 cents, or 7 cents, because it's hard to do 6.6. .6. Now we'll get into what I've prepared for you for uh, the county administrator's recommended budget. Total increase proposed from FY15 to 16, all funds, this is general fund, utilities funds, uh, just all the combined funds, $4,149,701 or 4.8%. Total increase proposed for the uh, general fund, which is the main fund we operate out of, $1,720,607 or 3.83%. The total that it would cut from the department request was $5,858,428. So as you can see, I whittled down that request into a more manageable uh, amount. $413,437 is included for a 2.5 percent pay increase that would be effective July 1st, 2015. Two new full-time employees, one which is a solid waste truck driver and the other a maintenance worker. Two new part-time employees in the social services department. Transfer to debt retirement fund, $6,070,418. This is an increase of $766,594, or 14.45%. So you can see there's where one large chunk of that $1.7 million uh, increase uh, is in transfer to debt retirement. Debt service payments for general government and schools are increasing $1,083,836. There is a one-time payment for the Lady Smith Library of $571,802 that is in that increase. Transfer to Schools Operation Fund, $12,330,680. This is an increase of $330,680, or 2.76%. Transfer to Comprehensive Services Act, $735,618. This is an increase of $54,478, or 8.48%. Transfer to Utilities Fund, another big fund, $1,713,130. This is an increase of $83,302, or 5.11%. Utilities Fund is increasing $126,284, or 2.29%. And when I mean increasing, that's the expense part of the Utilities Fund. Of that, State Fair Utilities is increasing $54,213, or 47.24%. And that's a good thing in that that's more things going on at the fair property. Um, and that is an out and in reimbursed by Meadow Vent Park. So we, we, um, we, build, we have to pay Hanover for that, and then we get reimbursed by Meadow Vent. So that, that budget number going up 54000 is is not really affect Caroline. We're paid for that completely. Utilities fund lost some revenue this year. Uh, BAB subsidies, a federal program, we lost $27,490, or 7.3% or down. Charges for services are going down about $7,230, or just a little under a half percent. And interest on investments down $4,250, or about 85 percent. Uh, so we did lose some revenue as well uh, that we were used to getting. Um, transfer to social services, $698,257. This is an increase of $76,701, or 12.34 percent. And as you noted, we had a couple of new uh, part-time employees in there. Um, as well as we added an employee out of out of budget last year, um, the board had added that. So that's 
some of that increases in salaries. Transfer to Capital Improvements Fund, Bowling Green and Lady Smith Fire Department repairs. It's $200,000. Uh, this is an increase of $12,629 or 6.74% over the $187,000 that we have in current year budget for courthouse security upgrades. If you just look at expenses increasing, excluding transfers to debt retirement and schools, it's $531,415 or 1.14%. So out of that $1.7 million, if you take away debt retirement and school money transfers, it's only $531,000. Uh, increase in expenditures over FY15. If you take uh, all transfers to other funds, which transfers to utilities, transfers to comprehensive services, all transfers out, just look, basically this would be the general fund departments, uh, county administrator, treasurer, public safety, fire and rescue. If you take all of those, um, we're only up to $298,431 or 0.064%. So while we propose those raises, we have made other cuts in the existing FY15 budget so that, that we've been able to cover those raises for the most part, um, other than about 298000 that the budget's up in just all the departments other than all the transfers. 2016 proposed expenditures is $46,657,676 for that increase of $1,720,607 or 3.83%. Now I'll talk about the school budget on, on uh, the overall school budget Total school budget request was $44,299,476. That was increasing $1,795,470 or 4.22. And that, when I'm talking total, I'm talking cafeteria, operations, everything. That's that total number based on what we approved last year. Um, what I'm recommending for the total uh, is $43,380,928. That's increasing $876,922 or 2.06% for their total budget, which is not just their operation budgets overall. Their state funds increase, and there has been some question of this has, has been uh, documented in the, in the paper by the school, so I'll try to explain that um, the best I can. Um, 449,606 was approved by the General Assembly, um, so we, we do have good confidence that that's probably the number that will be ultimately signed by the governor. They did get a compensation supplement. That's $218,778. That's directly from the General Assembly for supported positions in their budget to get a one one and a half percent raise I think the required local match for that sixty thousand nine hundred fifteen and as noted earlier I've got three hundred and thirty thousand sixty six hundred dollars in so clearly we've got that match covered they did get another large chunk of that 449 in what's a program called Virginia preschool initiative and that's two hundred twenty six thousand and sixty one more dollars so it basically doubles what they were getting in that program so they would have to have a match, a local match on that money of $109,939. So they are correct in that that can't be used for salaries. That has to be used for that preschool initiative program. So I assume they would have to hire teachers and they'll have more students in that program. But we would have to give them 1.109 in order for them to get that. That is correct, yes. And, and and, and that is included in that three hundred and thirty. It, 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 it could be, and I'll, I'm going to work, work my way on down that. State increases available for salary. If you, if you look at, they've lost some money for their SOQs. So the match went away for the money that they're losing on SOQs. But so if you take everything they're getting and what's not set aside for specific match for specific programs, it, it, it there appears that doing that math, and I have a spreadsheet that works all that out from the state spreadsheet, 167,913 is available, all said and done, for that's not required match anywhere. The local increase available for salary increases, if you take the matches out, then the, and the, even though they need 109 on one, we're going down in some other areas. It looks like it's about $298,327 of the local money that we set aside that could be used to add together to that 167 to make new funds available for salary increases would equal $466,240. State money of $167,000, almost $168,000. County money of $198,000. So that's where that math works out. So I, I do believe that's a, I'm not going to quote to a dollar, but it, working with the state uh, data that's available, that appears to be what's out there that's not required match that could be used. Total local funds for schools in, in my proposed budget, $18,322,705. That's an increase of $394,287 or 2.15% in local funds. 
This includes $12,330,680 for operations, $5,782,724 for school debt service payments, and $209,301 for new and existing lease payments for school buses. We proposed five new buses this year. They that desperately need a few new uh, buses uh, in this budget. So that, that increases that by about uh, eighty to ninety thousand dollars in in buses the local funds to schools equal to thirty nine point two seven percent of the general fund expenditures so right around forty percent of what we have in general fund expenditures is going to the school system this is the, I'm going to use this as part of and we'll probably use it again as um, we work through the public hearing for the tax rates but we're not proposing any tax rate increase we're proposing to stay the same at eighty three cent per one hundred um, we do see uh, what we expect is an increase in values of to twenty million four thousand eight hundred fifty three dollars. It's about four hundred thirteen thousand two hundred seventeen dollars, or two point one one percent in growth in real estate value. Uh, the bad news: uh, personal property rate. Uh, we're not proposing any rate increase or value you know, changes or anything. The personal property will run the same way it's run for a couple of years now, but we do see that decreasing down to eight million. $20,941. It's about $178,296 or 2.17% uh, down in revenue on personal property. It's taken a while to get that number where it is. It was a, it's a math number as you're working through all that and we made all those changes and dips and budgeting. But I think looking at what we're collecting, this is a realistic number for what we should get. And you know, I'd always encourage people to go buy new, more new cars. Um, projected under, under encumbered balances and this is the slides that don't fit and I'm, I, I apologize you're not going to see and I'll read them to you because they fit perfect on this computer down here so it's something between here and the projector it's not and I changed the resolution and I kept cutting the screen off so I, I fiddled with it as long as I could um, the unencumbered balance 630-2013 was ten million nine hundred one uh, and one hundred and one dollars one thousand one hundred one dollars that was 12.49% of our combined budgets in reserve at the end of June 2013. The unencumbered balance June 30th, 2014 was $14,297,822. And we expected some of this increase with the tax increase last year because you would receive a, a bump for the taxes going up in June that were unbudgeted. And, and that worked out to 17.46%. Um, it shows an increase from 13 to 14 of three million. $396,721. We budgeted to spend $689,581 in FY15 from that. We also had carryover purchase orders of $186,461. Since then, we've also matched $275,000 for 639 revenue sharing match that we did just in the fall. Uh, we also made a Ladysmith library payment that we made most of that out of the proper fund, but we were short in the proper fund $55,152. We also had a slight issue with the budget last year with GR, uh, GWRC, and we made a little adjustment of $3,628. We also came back, the fair asked for their uh, appropriation to be increased because they weren't aware that it was going down, and so that was made uh, another $3,000. So that those appropriations during the year, $1,202,822. So from the page previous, $3 million, you take that off, the effective increase between 13 and 14 is $2 million one hundred eighty three thousand eight hundred ninety nine dollars as we've trek moving forward I, I think we're going to probably still put three hundred thousand or so in the fund balance this year I'm not sure we're going to need all of the six hundred uh, and eighty nine thousand that we budgeted it's mainly a math you, you have to balance so you sort of use the fund balance as your balance in math so I don't I don't think we're going to use all that so I'm hoping and, and, and thinking and looking at where things are with revenues and expenditures this year that we'll be uh, in that range of 300,000 uh, to the good for the fund balance which will make the fund balance uh, 630 2015 around 13 million three hundred eighty five thousand dollars or 15.70 percent in this proposed FY 16 budget the balance forward revenue sheet shows 1 million three hundred seventy three thousand six hundred eighty one needed to balance the budget what that leaves is a remaining unencumbered balance increase from 2013 of $810,218. I did some work moving forward because that's where things get somewhat better as we move forward. As we move forward um, from projected uh, shortfall for 60.